All right, guys, we're finally back. Echidna is back with happy ReZero Day. It's been three years since season two. Psych, we've been covering his content every day, and it's going to continue. Subaru's birth death. Give it to me, Echidna, in another 10 out of 10 episode for sure. Happy ReZero Day. Season three is here. We just got a 90-minute first episode. Oh, yeah. He's using Eminence and Shadow soundtrack. The goat recognizes greatness. So, and Subaru actually almost made it the entire 90 minutes without dying. We got a new Archbishop, a bunch mm -hmm. of new characters, a brand new art style, yep. some new allegations. The art style is amazing. There is, um, so the overall production value, the art style, just phenomenal. It's just so good. But there's obviously censorship, which is, again, I actually hate lollies. I don't like lollicon fan service. But even I can recognize that when companies are starting to censor shit like this and there's woke translators and, you know, localizations, the subs are also fucking trash. This sets a precedence. It's not about whether or not you see more of the Lolly fan service, but more of what kind of precedence this sets moving forward and potentially more censorship beyond just this fan service happening. ...against Subaru and a really good cliffhanger. I can't wait for next... <laughs> cliffhanger, huh? She actually Lion King this poor kid after he pissed his pants while everyone is like rooting for her. Really good cliffhanger. I can't wait for next week. Words uh -oh. cannot describe how good ReZero is, but number- Fun fact that a community member pointed out, Regulus's color is black when it used to be white in season two. I don't think it matters. I think that this is a design choice by the studio just giving a new drip. I don't think that there's a light or a dark Regulus. I don't think there's twins. Although, with a show like ReZero, you could see some bullshit theories about that, right? Because nothing is ever a fact in ReZero. It's all just gaslighting and assumptions. Subarus can. I literally just realized this, but every season begins with Subaru spinning Beatrice. Yep. And remember, they formed a contract at the end of season two. Mm -hmm. So just like how Amelia had Puck before he left to buy some milk, Subaru now has Beatrice as his own personal spirit. Ex and it seems kind of like overnight, Biko is showing so much affection. If you compare like the previous episodes of season two until now, right? It just seems like night and day, but that's pretty much it. They, they, they overcame a huge hurdle in the season finale of Biko clinging on to, you know, nothing is forever mindset and then moving forward. And now Biko and Subaru, bro, their relationship, it is just so affectionate for each other and yes there is no romance here spirits are different beings they do not lust for subaru okay it's all about like companionship and it's very wholesome biko fan service last episode just phenomenal the amount of sound effect that she was making during this you know yukata scene like oh my god no spirit except also one your time skip true very true right it's not like the next day they're like this one year has passed and I want to know Priscilla cut content. What did she do to get such clout on the level of the Amelia camp? He tells Joshua that she's his daughter and <laughs> that Amelia is the mother. I thought yeah. that was pretty funny. Some and then Amelia didn't even care. Amelia was fine with it and was kind of teasing around and saying like, you know, I learned that babies aren't made from kissing Subaru. And then I missed it during the reaction, that line. I rewatched the episode probably two or three times last night after the reaction. I did. We... We ended the stream at 4 in the morning after a 3 hour reaction. I went to go get some fried chicken. And then I just got high as fuck and just watched ReZero again. There's some lines I just missed because I'm yapping too much. And Amelia here is, you know, fucking leaks that like, you know, I had the knowledge of making baby through kiss. And Subaru was like, yo, you're accidentally leaking shit to strangers. And this is like an important meeting. How do you think this looks to, you know, Yoshua? Something I noticed immediately is that the art style has changed a bit. And I'm I love it. I love it. The art style is just so gorgeous. I'm actually very relieved. Every character looks fantastic. Yeah. And this is a tremendous. There's one character that I was not happy with, though. I have to say it. Elsa. I'm so happy Elsa is back through Garfield's, like, schizo delusions. And honestly, Elsa is, it's the more I think about it, it's so funny how this 14 year old, 15 year old now, Chuni kid, he's pretty much a shonen protagonist, you know? Like, he is literally having this, 
struggle in his own head of trying to be number one over Reinhardt. Now he's having like his inner Jin Shuriki, like the inner beast, the inner tail beast, the inner hollow, like come out and talk to him. He's like, come on, you need more power. Like, oh my God, bro. Garfield literally having his own battle shonen protagonist arc right now. This improvement over the previous season, especially in Amelia's case, her buffs were so significant that I had to pause. The titties are just... Good googly moogly. The episode for a solid two and a half minutes just to fully appreciate her character. Also like, like, there were so many scenes where her titties are just... Oh my god. And then, uh, what else is there? Priscilla's, I think, canonically is still the biggest though, right? So, there was plenty of room in that carriage, bro. They didn't have to do Garfield like that. Priscilla. I thought Garfield prefers running, and he prefers having, you know, his foot contact with the ground, and therefore, uh, divine of the... Blessing... Divine protection of these... Earth spirit or something, right? This is his preference, right? Or feel like that. Priestella has an in- <laughs> I love this. The new zone found. Dark souls, bro. Also, Garfield just casually running like that, just faster, or just as fast as a dragon carriage kind of shows, like, this, this dude physically, he's just fucking crazy. I, I, I think that, like, last night, I truly just took on a moment to appreciate this character. Because, like, in season two, he was fucking annoying to me, and I did not really care about his backstory with the mom. Yeah, it's sad, but it was like, come on, bro. You're really gonna be standing in our way. But now it's everything is corrected, and the more I realize, like, how valuable of an asset this kid is. Like, he is, like, our answer for destructiveness, any type of battle. Roswell was like, yeah, I feel comfortable that Otto will be with you so you won't fuck up in the negotiation scenes. Psych. Roswell did not underestimate it. Roswell underestimated Subaru's retardation of literally running in there, just holding this lolly hostage, it seems like it, and then pissing off the songstress maniac, which has ruined the negotiation. So Otto was not able to fucking cover for that. But Garfield is like the answer of like, if shit goes wrong, he'll simply destroy everything and get out. But as we know, Pristella is built as a trap. What are they trapping in? In the past, probably a dragon, I'm thinking. I think that this city was created to be a trap for a dragon. There's no, like, lore or any sort of uh, historical knowledge that's been passed down on why it was created this way. But I want to believe that it was a trap for maybe... Witch of Envy? Dragon? Some sort of really bad calamity. Interesting design for a city. It's almost shaped like a coliseum, and according to Beatrice, the original purpose of the city trap. was to trap something inside it. I saw that. I saw that. Wait, wait, wait. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Boom. I hope Felix has a great moment this arc rather than just being confused healer support. Trap something inside it. The architecture is also just blatantly Japanese, yeah. meaning that Alec Hoshin, the person who built it, was obviously from Japan. Some With the Kansai dialect, right? Something else I found interesting was that Anastasia has the same last name Hoshin. as him. Speaking right. of Anastasia. Which implies that Anastasia could be a descendant of potion of the wilderness but don't we also know that anastasia was kind of like an orphan wasn't she like found like there was a break time episode in season two where it kind of implied that anastasia was like a street rat so the hoshin last name could be descendant could be just a title that she just picks up i'm not really sure we would we would need more lore of her her and julius lore is we get nothing. We, we see a little bit in season two break time in that one episode, but with the Iron Fang, you know, diaries. But other than that, I don't know. Of Anastasia. Was she always shaped like this? Yeah, the dress is fucking crazy, bro. The pouch. You think that you can't do fan service because it doesn't show skin? Dude, this is basically skin, but just shaded white because it's a dress. And these outlines, it's even more aggressive. She might as well be just naked right now. Always shaped like this? Cause I don't know, I might have to vote for her. Also, this isn't a spoiler, but in case you didn't know, Al, Al has one hand, one arm, bro. One arm isekai character. Al was supposed to tell Subaru that he's also from Japan in season yeah. one, but for some reason that scene was cut from the anime. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's light novel or web novel, but there's also further implications that like, He's associated with the witch cult. Rem mentions a thick miasma from the back of his helmet. His helmet could be the media that is associated with the rise of a different witch in the Valachian Empire, which was the reason why Regulus was sent there to destroy it. And uh, what else is there? He hates Rem and Rem, I think, based on the passage of like, oh, they're still alive. I think he was referring to both Rem and Rem. So there's something weird going on with Al. He's a very mysterious character, and a lot of people 
quite often don't even realize that he doesn't even have an arm. I didn't know he had only one arm because the poncho, his helmet, and always being beside Priscilla, right? It kind of like obfuscates and distracts the audience from like these details, but bro has only one arm. Liliana isn't nearly as annoying as I remembered from the web novel, and her songs were surprisingly my favorite part of the episode. Yeah, if only Crunchyroll could fucking adapt to it. <laughs> like, how are you gonna have the Sword Demon Ballet Act 2 or 1 or something and not have the actual fucking words, bro? Crunchyroll dropped the ball so hard that, like, next episode, guys, I promise that I'll have, like, a couple separate versions. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get- and Crunchyroll, it's not even just a song. There was a significant moment during the discussion in the room and, and how there was a conflict with uh, Priscilla's camp, right? And Subaru was talking about how I have to keep suffering, but the context wasn't him suffering, it was other people suffering. And Crunchyroll just fucked up Subaru's line there, which makes him seem very selfish and egotistical. It's just, Crunchyroll, what are you fucking doing? I need, I need to get fan subs. I need to go hit up my pirates and we're gonna get like separate, f separate versions next time. She kinda reminds me of one of those VTubers who talks in a cute baby voice, except for when they have to sing and then all of a sudden they sound 35. <laughs> Cause they're all hags. <laughs> Role playing as lollies. Who is he calling out right now? What VTuber is there that has a lolly voice, but then, but then sounds like a hag as soon as they start singing? I don't know. Five. A good example of ReZero's brilliant writing is how Liliana is used here with subtlety to mm. recap the events of previous seasons for the- Yes, this scene, as long, uh, along with Otto in the dragon carriage, really hypes up the world building, right? This is similar to One Piece, where after each significant arc of overthrowing a nation under its, like, just like, uh, uh, What's the root? What's the word? Just like it's a uh, bad ruling oppression, right? Liberating nations, beating warlords, yonkos and stuff. Then the entire world recognizes the feats of the Mugiwara pirates. Like it's so fucking hype. And here as well, the entire world is literally hearing the legends of Subaru. Wilhelm even makes a point at night where he's like, yeah, I don't think you truly understand like how much of your legend is being passed around. And Liliana also is very obsessed with these, you know, this legend. And she wants to make a song. And I think that... By the end of this arc, she will witness, right? She wants Subaru to tell her. That's another thing that I noticed while watching by myself. Before we went into the, um, the, uh, the Muse hair company guy negotiation scene, she was begging Subaru to tell, like, tell me more, tell me more. It's like, tell me more of what? Basically what happened throughout season one and two. But I think all she has to do is witness the events that'll unfold in season three, and she will have enough content to write a fucking song, and that song will be like a legend that'll pass down generations. Heroics of Natsuki Subaru, I think that's what's gonna happen with Liliana. Those of us that might have forgotten. Also, I thought it was funny how- Like, like, how could you possibly do this, bro? I know that you have good intentions, but like, you went in basically just like, like, what is this? You picked her up, you're like covering her mouth to a guy that's like so down bad for her. Like, this is such a bad look, but to him, he thinks that this is a good look. Subaru literally just met her, but he's already making plans to take her hostage for some reason. Regulus appears. Yeah. He's just casually walking around the city and he tries to use the authority of Riz on Amelia after accidentally bumping yeah. into her, but Subaru's mom didn't raise no cuck, so he intervenes and tries- I thought that Subaru touched Regulus and forcibly stopped him from interacting with Amelia's hair, but that was not the case. Both his arms, you can see, this arm is positioned downwards, if you can see here, and this arm is more for Amelia. Because like I'm like, oh my god, when I was rewatching it, I'm like, did Subaru actually touch Regulus? Like, that's, that's a big no-no, but he says something along the lines of, right now, something is shallow, like, my interaction or something with you guys is shallow, and therefore, uh, it's cool, it's my bad for tomorrow. Fate, fate will make us reunite, and that's when this shit's about to go down. So, Regulus is on his best behavior, I thought that he would start yapping about how you basically violated my personal space, how dare you fucking get in my way in the street, but nah. He conceded, which was amazing, but it's part of their plan. The Archbishops, I guess, I don't know. I don't know how much of a plan they have. Because Regulus is already showing up, and we see the next day, Sirius is already popping off in the morning. And here's a crazy theory about Sirius. Not, not, well, I have a bunch of theories, but this is not really a theory. My meme theory is that Juice and Fortune are actually fucked, and that's what Sirius is. But you know the morning radio station? Y you know how immediately... We have a morning radio station. I think that if Sirius gets access to that, because whatever Sirius is doing, it sounds like 
once people give her the attention and kind of listens, you're cooked. The authority of Wrath is already in play. There's some kind of like clap that happens also when everyone was like, whoa. What if she gets access to that control tower? Or it's the radio booth. And the entire Priestella hears her voice and gets under the influence. You know? Rather than just one stadium of people dying, the entire city, right? I'm like, holy shit? into her, but Subaru's mom didn't raise no cuck, so he intervenes and tries defusing the situation, which mm. Regulus could have easily interpreted as a violation of his rights, so Subaru doesn't- What the hell? I mentioned how he had a white collar, but in the trial, he actually has black collar here. But maybe this drip changed again in like episode one of season two. Because this is trial from like a couple hundred, like a hundred years ago. And then I don't know how this shit, I don't think the color fucking matters. Subaru doesn't even know how close he was to dying here. I'm surprised Regulus allowed that. If you're wondering why- it I think he allowed that because it's part of their plan. They have some sort of prep. I don't know what that plan is, but Regulus is on his best behavior because tomorrow is when shit's going to pop off. Amelia didn't recognize Regulus. Yeah, how the fuck did Amelia not recognize? I'm going to just give it to her by saying trial bullshit. His memories are hazy. Regulus, it's actually because in the novel, Regulus wasn't supposed to be dripped the fuck out. His appearance was supposed to be- Oh, that's the scene in the novel regulus this this is the white and black collar difference which i don't think it really matters wasn't supposed to be dripped the fuck out his appearance was supposed to be average. so bland average and forgettable that you wouldn't be able to pick him out of a crowd it's also been about a year since amelia took the trials but anyway in the yeah. trailer we yeah it makes sense i guess yeah 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 spoiler scenes that don't really matter saw regulus holding amelia so apparently he hasn't given up on her just yet Rem oh my god our Glorious leader of greed is saving Amelia against the art against the cult. This is amazing. Remember when women created the concept of toxic masculinity just so they could have another thing to complain about? Well, Garfield is a really good example of that because he just randomly swings on this man Reinhardt. Yeah, he feels the pressure and he feels threatened, as if he's just a wild beast and he has quarter blood. He just needed to challenge him to prove his existence. Even though they've never met before. And the reason he did that is because the sanctuary was Garfield's entire world before this. Exactly. You're a frog in a well, unaware, ignorant to what kind of real power exists outside. But I still think that for his age, even Reinhardt said Garfield is tremendously talented and strong, but Reinhardt is an unfair comparison to put yourself against. He's never had the chance to meet someone stronger than himself, so as soon as he smelled the strength on Reinhardt, it freaked him out and he just attacked. That was such a cool scene, man. Than himself, so as soon as he sm like, smelled the strength on this scene here, Reinhardt, like you can feel like there's some sort of like upwards motion happening to kind of like exude Reinhardt's aura, as we saw in like Arc 1, Episode 3 against Elsa versus Reinhardt when he like stomped the ground. It freaked him out and he just attacked instinctively. Garfield mm -hmm. still seems to have some trauma left. This is the one thing I hate. I love that Elsa is back, but Elsa's face looks way baby-like. I loved Elsa's design better in Season 1 and 2. This Elsa, while the titties are way bigger, I think that the face is too baby for me. Behind from Elsa. Like, 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 upgrade here, maybe. But, like, this face, maybe it's more lore accurate to what the actual, you know, versions of Elsa is in the light novel. But to me, I enjoyed anime season one and season two design. It just made her more milfy, more mommy. This is baby. Mixed with his frustration about not being the strongest anymore. However, he's still able to be a hero. And again, it's just so funny to me that Garfield right now is having his own battle shonen main character arc of like, I seek more power. I need to surpass everybody, be number one. And then having like an internal monologue with like this dark version of himself, which it's not really, it's Elsa. I still don't know how Elsa's appearing. They never explained it. Maybe it has to do with her being quote unquote a vampire and both biting each other. Maybe there's, they share some sort of connection like that. Or maybe it's due to some sort of trauma that Garfield experienced during that battle against Elsa and she's kind of coming back. Either or, I'm so fucking happy that Elsa has returned in season three in the Schizo Delusions. Just phenomenal. Frustration about not being the strongest anymore. However, he's still able to be a hero by saving a bunch of kids, and he tells them his name is Gorgeous. Dude, the Gorgeous Tiger is funny. Like, why gorgeous of all adjectives? But the cutest thing is everyone is doing the Natsuki Subaru pose, man. 
nickname is Gorgeous Tiger in English, which I thought was a really cute way of showing how much he admires Subaru. Then yep. he just randomly stumbles upon his mom, who he hasn't seen. Yeah, it's looking like his mom, right? Like, there's no confirmation, but god damn, does it look familiar. Like, it pretty much is, right? Since he was a kid when she abandoned him, but they aren't the only family having problems. Mom is wild and out, potentially has four baby daddies. Because Garfield and Frederica are separate dads, and now she has two extra kids that just looks like Garfield and Frederica. But that means that at minimum, right, there's one baby daddy. At most, there's two separate baby daddies. There's so four fucking baby daddies. This woman is the biggest hoe of ReZero, and I'm all for it. Abandoned him, but they aren't the only family having problems. Reinhardt has... There's a new monkey in chat. Class, teach them how things work here. Granddaddy issues, because Wilhelm unfairly blamed him for the death of his wife, Theresia. However- But, like, Reinhardt literally killed Theresia, apparently, right? Like, who knows what happened? We don't really see any actual details. But, something, like... Maybe Theresia got possessed, right? Because, like, what happened? There was a battle against the White Whale. But then why would Reinhardt have to kill Theresia? I thought the White Whale killed Theresia, but no. Reinhardt had to do it, but maybe it's a similar situation where she got possessed like Subaru did. I don't know. I'm trying to throw guesses. Or, the classic, whenever you're in doubt, Pandora. Easy. I love this card. Every, everything, I'll try my best to come up with my own headcanon theories, but I will always have the Pandora card because this is bullshit. Pandora did it, bro. Yeah, Theresia, Pandora, bro of his wife, Theresia. However, Wilhelm regrets that, and he's now working to make amends and repair their relationship. His son, Heinkel, on the other hand, what still blames Reinhardt to this day, and seemingly only exists to be an asshole, drink, and ruin the vibes. So, am I supposed to believe that this guy is also a victim because he lost his mom, Theresia, who he loved so much due to Reinhardt, and Wilhelm was admonishing Reinhardt, and it's just like the Astria family is just... There's a lot of family drama. I cannot imagine Thanksgiving's dinner, bro. It's fucking a nightmare. But one has to also assume that this guy could be just a greedy motherfucker that intentionally planned the kidnapping of Felt 15 years ago to separate Wilhelm, the sword demon, away during the subjugation of the white whale and planned for this situation so that he himself could be the heir of the Astria assets which I'm also down for. Maybe he's like a depressed, drunk alcoholic due to the trauma that he had from losing his mom and he's lashing out like this. Or he's a master mind and he just designed all of this. Who knows? Drink and ruin the vibes. Priscilla pulls up too and that was the exact moment I really started to appreciate the new art style. Titties. She's just the hottest character alive in ReZero. You all More than a kid now? Priscilla nut. You gotta change your fucking name. Enough. The brand needs to change here. Also might have noticed that Priscilla doesn't carry a sword. Well, yeah, the Yang sword. It looked like she just pulled it out of thin air. I re-examined that scene over and over again. In fact, why don't we bring it up right now? Why don't we bring up this episode right now? Right over here. Bro, I replayed this scene so many fucking times because it was just so hype for me. Uh, and the craziest thing is what led up to it, right? Because like Heinkel was basically talking shit. Heinkel was basically like talking shit about um, how, yeah, little kid, you and Reinhardt, you ain't getting my fucking inheritance. And then Priscilla got mad and said, shut the fuck up, Heinkel. And Heinkel was like, all right, I'm, I'm in the middle of a very important talk right now. And then Priscilla like uppercuts him. Priscilla literally uppercuts him at this point. Austria family belongs to me. Priscilla is like, hey, peasant. What now, nah, Lady Priscilla? There's also an interesting line. Basically, Heinkel implied that like um, my, my camp right now. Let's see. The one I'm backing is this is the thing that set Priscilla off. Right? <laughs> Heinkel was like the one, after he's talking all that shit, he's saying the one I'm backing is? And then Priscilla's like, I honestly don't want you to say that you're backing me because you're such a fucking peasant, maybe? And then she uppercuts his ass, right? She literally upper, shut up, uppercuts with the fan. He drops to his knees. And then immediately Yangsword shows up. And 
she had the fan in her right hand. So maybe the fan did turn into the sword. I'm not really sure. The sword, the Yang sword also, has like the color schemes, black, gold, red, that matches Priscilla's fan and her entire drip as well. So there's something very interesting happening. I feel like the fan is a precursor for the sword, but the sword just, just came out of fucking nowhere. It was so hype. Live in ReZero. You also might have noticed that Priscilla doesn't carry a sword. Well, the light novel explains that she drew her sword from the sky and it was only supposed- From the sky? Supposed to be visible for a split second. They also cut some di- Sheesh, give me a break here. You even drew the sun or yang sword. So is there a moon sword? There has to be a yin sword associated with the yang sword, right? Dialogue from Al where he reveals the name of the sword, which is the yang sword. Ooh. Looking back now, it's kind of weird that she whips it out here. Yeah, why? For Heikel? Are you gonna kill him? I know that this is a temper tantrum, but also, is this Priscilla flexing her powers to the rest of the candidates? Like, this is- Like, you, you are, like, going for, like, a nuclear option to a random fucking peasant, and she just pops the Yang Sword. Like, the, the fan was enough. <laughs> and then she drews the Yang Sword to flex to let the other candidates know of her power? Is it smart to flaunt your powers? Well, she's arrogant and very prideful. I loved it though. I, I love that she pulled it out. Probably one of the best moments of the show for me. Like, was that really necessary? Anyway, right at That tap as well implies that Priscilla is so fucking strong. Her physical strength, and she's even like handling this Yang sword, which is probably super heavy with one hand. I think Priscilla, along with Amelia, they have like superhuman strength. Anyway, right at the end of the episode, we get the moment Jeez. we've been waiting for. The Archbishop of Wrath introduces herself, Sirius Romani Conti. Romani the exact Conti! same last name as Betelgeuse, yeah! but hold up. Before ears. Before we go any further. Ears and eyes and hair color were Romani Conti. Did Fortuna and Juice fuck? First things first. Smash or pass. Now I would need to see what's under the bands. Now, this is a tricky one because the bandages conceal her true yeah. identity. Yeah. There could be anything under there. But I think I'm gonna have to roll the dice for this one, boys. Smash. And go with the smash. Of anyway, you would. she's on top of a tower giving a speech to a group of people, and it seems like she's using some sort of ability to captivate them, right? Yes, I think that there was a point. I was, I was looking back last night, just watching the episode by myself to figure out when the authority of Wrath happened. There is a point where she claps. So, there, I'm not sure exactly what the conditions are, but it seems like she needs to get the attention of everybody. What she was saying, the dialogue, was literally the most non-content fluff ever. She didn't say fucking anything. She was like, oh, everybody, please, can I have your attention? Oh, I'm sorry for making you um, uh, drag out your time when you're so busy, but can I have your attention? She's basically just saying that over and over again. But there's a point where she kind of like claps when everyone went silent and mentioned about like a 30 second timer. She's like, oh, it took you like 30 seconds to like be quiet and listen to me. And I'm not sure if that's the point where the authority of Wrath has taken over, but it sounds like there is some sort of condition where the people must pay attention. And then once they hear it, they start to kind of become uh, consumed with madness, wrath, madness, maybe that makes sense. And as their hearts are united as one, which was literally stated in the episode, they all suffer the same damage as like a voodoo doll taking damage and then everyone else taking damage. And then the craziest shit is, the craziest shit is, what about the control tower for the radio broadcast. Instead of Sirius doing this to a plaza of people, the entire city of Pristella could be held hostage by her. You know? If she gets that a radio booth and does the morning broadcast and everyone can hear it, that's gonna be fucking insane. Up of a tower giving a speech to a group of people, and it seems like she's using some sort of ability to captivate them. Right before she clapped her hands, yes. Subaru- Yes, yes, that's the moment. Right before this clapped the hands, he mentions about the 30 seconds of it being silent. So simultaneously, he focused on the link with Beatrice within his chest by calling out to her. So he can subconsciously call out to vehicle like that, huh? I didn't know. Subaru could convey that something was wrong. This is the firm bond that tied a contractor to his contract, the spirits. Who was trying to contact Beatrice to come help him. Okay. But after she claps, it's like he's in a trance. Yeah, I think that was the moment. The clap, 30 second, ritual, I'm not sure. You paid attention too much, and now you are under 
Some sort of trance like hypnotism. Perhaps it's like he's in a trance. She keeps apologizing over and over, and she's able to identify specific people in the crowd that feel angry towards. Yeah, that was very interesting. She pointed out three separate groups of people, right? And she was like, I'm sorry that you're so angry and that you're held up. So I guess she somehow is a huge empath and understands her, which obviously shouldn't be possible. I thought it was really creepy how she I mean, the hearts are one, right? There's, there's this very key line of how all the hearts are united as one, which kind of implies that once this power is in effect, the authority of wrath, she then kind of understands the feelings of everybody. She just introduced herself as a sin archbishop of the witch cult, yet everyone's laughing and having a great time. Then uh -huh. she brings out a kid who's clearly detained against his will, yet they all start cheering and yep. applauding his- And it just feels like I'm just trying to somehow relate the theme of madness. And of course, look at this, the ear. Pointy ear, grayish silver hair, same eye pupil color as Amelia and other, you know, like, like, like Fortuna, right? Romani Conti, just kind of crazy, but it, it just, it, it is just kind of crazy, this power and what this means for the future of this art. Detained against his will, yet they all start cheering and applauding his death. They've all gone mad. And in typical ReZero fashion, everyone else dies too. Yeah. So let's talk about this episode. Okay. Sirius is really cool so far, and I'm a big fan of her voice actress and how expressive she is. As for sure, her voice acting popped off. For her authority, it seems like she can control people to some extent. She can manipulate their emotions and... I guess this is basically the peak of when our authority of wrath has been invoked, when the eyes have turned red and they're literally all crying and they're saying our hearts are united as one. That is the moment to just kill everybody. I don't know exactly when the damage sharing effect takes into effect, but I feel like this is the threshold. Up until now, they all can be in a trance-like state, but maybe there's a way to kind of break them out of that illusion. But if it reaches a point where the eyes goes red, maybe that's when the shared damage takes effect, and it wouldn't have otherwise kill them apparently and i really liked how the visual effects and the red eyes helped to show mm -hmm. that they were under her control so who is serious well first of all she let's look at this betragus orion's belt rigel is very interesting because this is the name of subaru's son with rem in the if greed route and then there's serious down here She's also named after a star, which many ReZero characters, including Subaru, are. She mm -hmm. has the same last name as yeah. Betelgeuse, so she could either be married or related to him. Betelgeuse is a spirit, though, meaning he can't have biological parents or children, so she's either his wife or sister. Go back, go back. She's either his is a spirit, though, meaning he can't have biological parents or children. Okay, spirits cannot have children. Spirits also cannot have parents. A spirit is just a spirit and can, okay, okay, really? But it's a spirit possessing a different body of a human. Well, I don't really know, but okay. So it, it cannot be a child or a parent, meaning it has to be somehow a wife. So she's either his wife or sister. Wife or sister is somehow related. But on top of that, the craziest, again, check out the traits of her eye color, the hair color and her pointy ear that screams elf or both. She also wears toilet paper over her entire body, which if you ask me, I think is because the author wanted to hide her identity from mm. us. I think she's a character we've seen before who saw- This is Fortuna. And we don't have to take the Romani Conti last name so serious, right? It could have been someone that took upon that name, right? You could fucking theorize about how this is actually Fortuna and somehow she went fucking, she survived, she went crazy and fucking took on Romani Conti last name, right? Like, that's some bullshit you could do. Romani Conti last name is very interesting, but now spirits cannot have parents or children. So sister, wife, or something could be a character we've seen before. Could also not be, but very close association with the elves. For who suffered a tragedy and was turned into a villain, just like Betelgeuse. I'll go ahead and say it. I yeah, obviously, right? This is the most obvious one. I think Sirius is Fortuna. They both have silver hair, purple eyes. The color is a little bit darker, but I don't think that really matters too much. Eyes, elf ears, and they're both connected to Betelgeuse. Does it get more obvious than that? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, and let me know what you See, I didn't know the rule set of Sirius not having to be, not able to have children or have parents, so it's, you know, Juice and Fortuna fucking is, maybe they did, they, maybe they did, but you know, it's not able to reproduce, but at this current time, 
This is the level one theory, right? This is the most obvious one. But beyond that, I have no other guesses because we don't really know other characters. And we're assuming that this is a character we've already seen before. Who else could it be, right? We've, we haven't seen other characters with this hair color. That's also a girl. That's an elf. That also has a close association with Romani Conti. That's the only character I can think about. Silver hair, purple eyes, elf ears, and they're both connected to Betelgeuse. Does it get more obvious than that? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, and let me know what you think about Regulus being here. So far, he- I think that we are fucked. I think that the Archbishops may have mobilized their forces together, rather than all of them randomly showing up, because Regulus was on his best behavior until tomorrow, which was when Sirius popped off. I think we're cooked. I think they had a lot of prep time. And then the scariest part is the checkpoint. The checkpoint that has been established is minutes away from Sirius doing her thing. What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? That checkpoint is so bad. <laughs> Reinhardt is here, true. Reinhardt could figure out something out, right? He'll show up in five seconds, but man, that checkpoint is diabolical, man. Let me know what you think about Regulus being here. So far, he's just walking around not really doing anything, but there's a lot of people around breathing his air, so he could snap at any moment. Mm -hmm. Wrath is also here, and from the... Tr and I think Gluttony will also be here. Another very interesting topic right now is how letters in ReZero often just get fucked up. Right now, Yoshua is supposed to deliver some sort of very, very, very important letter regarding gluttony. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but <laughs> Yoshua could just die. I don't know. But whenever letters are involved in ReZero, right? Season 1, what happened? Rem's letter, it was blank letter because Rem got erased. Season 2, the letter that was meant for Amelia that made it there, and that's why she felt very lonely and isolated when Yandere wrote, right? The letter here, I, I feel like it's gonna be bad again. Trailer, we know that Gluttony and one other Archbishop are gonna show up too. So. That's right. This one, pulling the fucking G-string thing. <laughs> she has the traits of a Lugunican princess or Lugunican royal, which is blonde hair, red eyes, and fang. And here's another point. Why did I never make this connection? Felt and Priscilla. Does she not have blonde hair? Does she not have red eyes? But she does not have a fang. Which means, does she have some sort of Lugunican blood in her? As in the royal family? Or is this just a random trait? I, I don't know. Last night, I was observing that episode again, and I was like, wait a fuck up. It's like obviously more orange and reddish than this, this blonde color. And the absence of the fang kind of makes me think that, like, yeah, she's not like direct descendant. But I wonder if there is actual like, you know, uh, genetic traits in here. Or maybe it just doesn't matter, and it's just orange hair color. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Not really snap at any moment. And one other Archbishop are going to show up too. So I guess the question is, where should we play Reinhardt? We've got... I don't know, man. That's the tricky thing, right? And I don't think that we can rely on Reinhardt too much because a show like this has shown us that super powerful characters will be very balanced and if not nerfed by... Due to extreme situations, and yeah, maybe Reinhardt can't save everybody. So now, what do we do? Reinhardt goes to Sirius. Reinhardt goes to Regulus. Gluttony, the other harpy-like girl. I, I don't know. We've got four archbishops yeah. and only one of him. So where do you guys think we need? Him? We're fucking cooked. Whoever, I don't know. We need to see what the other archbishops are gonna do, right? We need more loops to see like how. Like, what is the most fucked up thing that we cannot prevent without Reinhardt and go from there? Him the most. From the trailer, it looks like he's fighting Wrath, but is that the right matchup? Who Personally, knows? I would like to see what would happen if- Maybe it's a mistake, man, and somewhere else is getting more cooked, and we're gonna learn from that. Gluttony tried to eat him, but in terms of skill level, I don't think anyone other than Reinhardt stands a chance against Regulus. Also, what was up with Reinhardt being blamed for the death of Theresia? I think that Theresa might have been possessed, right? What kind of situation would create a scenario where Theresa, after going down to hunt the white whale, had now to be slayed by Reinhardt? It seems to me that she was either possessed or something bad happened. And then at the end of the day, the default theory can just be Pandora. When she died, Reinhardt was like four. So how could he have caused her death? Let me know your thoughts. I think that Reinhardt is just that fucking powerful and he at four years old that he could have done it. But also, 
just fucking blame Pandora for everything. We got some funny slice of life moments this episode, like when Beatrice ate a bunch of wasabi, wasabi without knowing what it was and everyone laughed at her, and when she was trying to get Subaru's attention so he could compliment her new outfit. Yeah. I know some people are going to complain about probably the best art scene of Amelia right now. This episode having a lot of sense. The best just face, face card frame for Amelia. This one was the best up in reunions. Some of you might have expected non-stop nut-busting action the whole time, but my advice is to savor these moments of peace while you still can, mm -hmm. because, I mean, we've all yeah. seen the trailer, Shit's about the to fucking pop off. city's on fire, and Subaru doesn't really get another break like this for multiple seasons. And his, and, and his, like, what, what is his, his, him stating, like, I'm sick, I feel so sick, imagine, for an entire year, you're just living in pl like blissful peace and suddenly you're reminded that return by death is a thing and to I, I i was like why is he acting like this is such a big deal because it's been a year and now it's just like he's getting triggered of like oh no the suffering is back the suffering is back anyway this episode was a 10, 10 out, of out of 10 it was nice to watch this in english instead of french but i've already seen it a billion times after it leaked so i'm really hyped for episode two thank you everyone for mm -hmm. watching my video though i'll have another one next week so yes, make sir. sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that go give mr echidna a like on the channel here's a link Please go check it out. There's obviously way more videos I'm going to farm from him. Please go like his video. Check out his channel if you haven't. And I will see you next time.